Hello and welcome to another evening of stock car racing here on Premier Sports, where tonight the action comes from the Adrian Flux Arena in Kings Lynn, one of the UK's premier shaleways, with over 40 brisker Formula One stock cars set to do battle. Just one week to go until the British Championships at Sheffield for both Brisker F1 and National Mini Stocks. All the top names will be eager to get some shale track time in. A number of the cars tonight carrying pink painted bumpers in memory of the victims of the Manchester terrorist attack. And the whole sport coming together to remember those who lost their lives and everyone affected by the terrorist atrocities at the Manchester Arena. Tonight's programme sees the heats taking place in the first part. Then in the second half we have the final for the National Mini Stocks and the Brisk Ref Ones and the Grand National to end things. But we begin with the traditional Kings Lynn Whites and Yellows series race. The lower graders out in action for this one. 14 cars on track for a 10 lap race. A chance for some of the uh, lower scorers in the field to show their stuff. Some of the lesser lights in the sport to strut their stuff here. We have a total of 14 cars out there. Names to watch include veteran campaigner Jeff Nichols in 215. Nigel Harry is out in this one in 45. So the very smart new car of Richie Ahern, who's raced in a number of different formulae in the past. He's on the inside there in at number 18. Russell Cooper leading the field away along with Richard Woods in 268. There's Jack France in 216. And in relative newcomers Dan Clifford and Fraser Nairn in 363 and 480 electing to start from the back of the grid. Look out also for Mick Rogers in 244, the former V8 hot stocks world champion is Richard Woods on the front of the grid alongside Sean Willis in 287 doing most of his racing on the tarmac this year so 10 laps of racing on the very impressive Adrian Flux Arena Shaleway gets underway Nigel Harry leading the crop of yellow graders the second grade if you like in Risk Ref 1 already bumpers going in there Jeff Nichols being pushed wide in turns 1 and 2 by John Wright in 348 he gets forced out wide by Mick Rogers in turn and there's Richie Ahern number 18 moving into brisk ref one after a number of years racing in formulas such as uh, speedwork v8 stock cars from the tangle there at the back and the intro marker tire goes fraser nairn in 480 he's left facing the wrong way look out leaders richard woods goes around the outside he's your early leader ahead of the uh, 415 of russell cooper nigel harry in third place in 45 you've not seen brisk ref one before and the white grade is the lowest grade for the lower scorers, perhaps the less experienced drivers, followed by yellow. Then it goes blue, red and superstar. We'll see them join in for the uh, heats after this uh, white and yellows race. Kingsley runs uh, a dedicated white and yellow grade series every year. Some Cooper coming under attack there from uh, Nigel Harry. And there's Tim Warwick as well in the car with the white wall tyres, number 307. We ride on board with Mick Rogers, 244, the former V8 Hot Stocks world champion. Worcestershire. Seeing his son James make appearances in the F2s in the past as well, and Mick Rogers looking good here as he starts to close down the leaders. Don right ahead of him just pops uh, 215. Jeff Nichols wide there. Chris Farnell behind him in 32. They avoid a spun car. Five laps to go then for Richard Woods in 268. Spun car there is Sean Willis in 287 who started on the front row. Everybody just about managing to avoid him, but Russell Cooper now almost set to attack for the lead as they come into turns three and four, avoiding Fraser Nairn's car on the inside of turn four. Nigel Harry in quick behind them in the 45, the man from Warwickshire. All laps to run now in this uh, ten-lap sprint for the whites and yellows. Russell Cooper starting to close up, positions himself to the inside on turns three and four, having to run wide on both turns here due to spun cars coming under attack there goes the bumper in fires him out wide he has to go wide to avoid the spun car clips the fence and russell cooper takes the lead but nigel harry has gone through into a second place as well he's ready to attack for the lead but he's under fire in turn from woods and woods attacks they both spin and russell cooper left in the clear as the uh, two behind rejoin oh and russell cooper hits a back marker dan clifford hits a marker tire there going into turn well that's delayed the leader and oh, there's a whole shimozzle behind them Re elliot smith goes around nigel harry's got caught up with richard woods tim morick's in there as well well i don't know who's come out of that with the lead woods is stuck on the outside so is harry there's dan clifford he's a lap down now who's leading it, i think it's elliot smith now how's he done that he's spun completely around in all that mayhem a lap ago somehow he's come out of this with the lead i'm not quite sure how we're on the last lap now and it looks like it's going to be a win for Elliot Smith in 293, recovering from a full 360 degree spin on the penultimate lap. He comes through to win it ahead of Russell Cooper. 
confirm the rest of the results in a moment, but that was unusually fierce for a white and yellow grade series race. Spectacular stuff there going into the uh, final lap with Nigel Harry, I think, lunging in for a revenge attack on Richard Woods after they tangled going for second place. That also took out Russell Cooper. He hit the back marking Dan Clifford. Through it all, Elliot Smith came through to win by one and a half seconds ahead of Russell Cooper. Chris Farnell in third place. He got fastest lap. And John Wright and Mick Rogers rounding out the uh, top five. 11 of the 14 starters going the distance. 293, Elliot Smith, winner of the Whites and Yellows heat here at Kingsland. It's only a Whites and Yellows heat, but hey, a win's good or whatever race it's in. It is, a win is a win. Fantastic it was. Brilliant. Especially, I was in fifth place, not expecting to win, and I even spun out, and I still won. <laughs> yeah, you were catching Nigel and the others yeah. in front, then you had a bit of a tangle on the back straight, but then they had a little incident, and here where you went. Yep, I ended up winning, so job done. And if you can repeat that in the final, happy days. Yeah, I'd love that. That'd be fantastic. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Now it's time for the higher graders to join in then for the first of two heats. There are 21 cars on track for the first of them. All three of the Waneman clan out in this one. Frankie Waneman Jr., the world and British champion. Danny Waneman and also Frankie JJ, Frankie Waneman Jr., Jr. in treble five. So out there we've got Lee Fairhurst, Tom Harris, Paul Hines out there as well, Bradley Harrison, just some of the names to watch in uh, this field. Nigel Harry's out there as well in 45. Blue Raiders headed by Billy Johnson in 169, Carl Hawkins in the 175 car. Red Top's heading through, Mark Woodhull in there, he's a shale specialist in 335, he'll be one to watch here. There's Tom Harris, the uh, day glow yellow and red car. Fraser Nairn starting at the uh, back of the grid in 480, once again an early casualty in the white and yellow grade race. So this will be a 16 lap race this time. 364 Rob Clamps will be the man to lead them off. The only white grader in this one. The green flag waves and away we go. With Clamp leading into the first turn. Jack France in 216 in second. Already a bit of push and shove among the yellow tops and the blue graders with uh, Carl Hawkins hitting the fence there on the first turn. And the back straight they go. Hawkins will lose a place possibly to Luke Dennis. 192, Frankie JJ in treble five in there as well. Carl Roberts gets pushed wide in 313. We saw him take a few wins at Bellevue earlier this year, moving him up from yellow to red grey. There's Bradley Harrison, number 25, and above the red drops and wallop into the fence go Carl Roberts and Ben Riley. Roberts spins out as a result there. It's still Robert Clamps who leads the way in 364, side by side the second. Jeff Nichols trying to get through on the inside. Richie Ahern in there as well in number 18 procession in the sunshine of Kings Lynn at the moment. Live enough, I'm sure, as the race goes on. Tom Harris setting some quick laps further back in the pack, making progress up the order as Billy Johnson lunges at Richie Ahern. He missed and hit the fence. Tim Warwick crashes into the marker tyres in 307. Another collision there, and Nigel Harry's got caught up with somebody stuck on the front bumper of a couple of fellow yellow graders. Jeff Nichols is one of them. And identify who the other one is. It's Jack France in 216. Another car hits a marker tyre in avoidance there, a bit of chaos on turn two, but Rob Clamps, that's given him a clear lead with the cars that were battling the second and third, stuck there on turn two now, the three yellow graders piled up. And there's the world champion with the goal for it, Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. attacking Ben Riley here, fires him into the back of Billy Johnson, Paul Hines in behind them in 259, they're lapping Fraser Nair in 480, with the Leicester City FC logo large on his aerofoil. Getting narrower there, coming off turn two with the stranded cars on the outside. As we look back from uh, Junior Waitman's car, he's got around Ben Riley now in 4 2 2. World champion moving up to challenge the leaders, I'm sure, fairly shortly. Here is the lead battle. Rob Plant has been reeled in by Carl Hawkins in 175, who graduated from V8 Hotstocks a, a couple of years ago. Tapping for the lead here as they go down into turn one. He slip chopped his way up the inside. At half distance, it's Rob. It's uh, Carl Hawkins who's got the lead ahead of Rob Plant. Tom Harris is there though in third place ahead of Luke Dennis. Plant attacking back against a good run by the white grader. Tom Harris is there behind him as the Union flag is out for halfway. It's Hawkins that leads. Harris now second. Plant has gone down to third. Then it's Dennis and Junior Waitman, the world champion, next ahead of Paul Hines. Then it's Frankie JJ at 217. That's Lee Fairhurst, 2012 world champion, won that on the tarmac at Skegness. Tom Harris.
Norris positioning himself to attack our race leader in a Wayman built car. He's gone wide coming out of turn two, and through goes Harris into the back straight. So Tom Harris in 84, won his world title here at King's Lynn some four years ago. The action there behind as they go into turn three, about six cars together pushing and shoving. Danny Wayman was in the middle of that lot in 2 1 2. Harris leads the way then in 84, the son of. Mick Harris, who raced as number eight for many years. Five laps to go, coming up to lap Tim Warwick, who we saw hit the marker tyres on the inside earlier on. So five-car Hawking, less than a second down in second place, then it's Dennis, Junior Waitman, Ben Riley, and Robert Clapps. Riley recovering well after he was nearly taken out by uh, Carl Roberts early on. Junior Waitman's now got past Luke Dennis. Four laps to go. He's risen from 19th on the grid up into third at the 12-lap mark. It's Tom Harris, who started 17th on the line of the 21 cars out front. Ahead of Carl Hawkins and Warwick, he's a lap down, so it's then Waveman, ahead of Dennis and Riley. Warwick across the uh, curve on the inside there. Here come the leaders once again, Tom Harris in 84, in control of this race now. It's a new car for this season, and it is performing beautifully. Carl Hawkins looks like a settled for second place. Now, I don't think Junior Wakeman will quite catch him here. He's got Luke Dennis on his tail, been in good form on the shale over the last few years, the man in 192. There is the gold roof glitzing in the sunshine. Junior Wakeman on his way to what looks like third place. We're on the last lap now, the dust beginning to fly. It's going to be a win for number 84. Tom the Hitman Harris comes around the final turn. He's going to take heat seat number one here at the Adrian Flux Arena. The win goes to Tom Harris ahead of Carl Hawkins. Third is Waitman. Fourth place will go to Ben Riley ahead of Luke Dennis. And the rest of them come home. Firmly full top ten in just a few moments' time. Nigel Harry there pulled up on the inside of turn four. He was an early retirement. Spin there on the final turn for Carl Roberts in 3 1 3. So a win for Tom Harris then by uh, over one and a half seconds from Hawkins in the end. Junior Wayman in third ahead of Ben Riley. And Luke Dennis with Lee Fairhurst coming in in sixth position ahead of Paul Hines. Danny Wayman got the fastest lap of that race even though he failed to finish. 84, Tom Harris, winner of Heat 1 here at Kings Lynn on a dry, dusty night. It was a fast race. Yeah, it's very fast actually and uh, it makes a change to be winning on a share. We've had uh, a bit of bad luck and we've not really been on the pace recently. so. Um, Spent a lot of time in the car over the last couple of weeks and it was good in that one, really good. Now obviously there's a certain championship coming up in a, in a week or so that uh, you'll be going for no doubt, you'll want to win the British. I want to win every, every race I go in to be fair, um, but yeah, British championship would be nice. It's um, a championship I've not won, um, but the with Sheffield, it's, it's going to be a, a very long, hard day I think. You know, posting wire fence, not much room to pass and you know the track will be very slick after the first race, so um, that track like that would be a good test for the car. Yeah, if you've got your car on the sweet spot now, it'll be nice at Sheffield. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's the point. Me, uh, my little crew chief told me that I backed off too much in that one. You've got to take advice from the crew chief. Yeah, tell the man what you said. Backed off. Yeah. Backed <laughs> off. I went too slow, he said, at the end. <laughs> well, good luck in the final. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. The other half of the entry on Trentman for the second heat. We've got 19 cars out there. This time, and names to look out for in this one include number 16, Matt Newsom, 445, Nigel Green. Stuart Smith is out there in 390. So much success he's had already this season. Former world champion 55, Craig Finnegan. Also got 197, Ryan Harrison. And 21, Mark Gilbank, newly promoted to superstar for this month. Former world champion Paul Harrison, number two, out there as well among the 19 car entry. Real quality names out in this one in the sunshine at the Adrian Flux Arena. The track, as you can see, has been uh, watered pretty heavily to keep the dust down. 445 Nigel Green carrying our onboard camera, currently riding high in the uh, both the grading points and the World Championship qualifying points to add to his tally here at St King's Lynn today. 16 laps again the distance, and away they go. Russell Cooper in 415 will lead them into the first turn, the lone white grader in this race. Red Top's a bit of pushing and shoving Ben Hurd, but in the middle of that so group in 207, Ryan Harrison 197 there on the inside. Paul Harrison number two under attack from 445. Nigel Green, Russell Cooper is going to be spun out there on turn four. Round goes the leader. It's James Morris who's taken over in 463. Cooper spins onto the infield. 
Mills charging past on the outside. Hopefully Russell will be able to get going again. Morris leads it then from Chris Broxot in 3-3-8, down from blue-grey to yellow this month. Nigel Green almost getting caught up there with Craig Finnegan. They survived that on turn two. Somebody slowing down on the blue tops. That's Colin Goodswin. He and East Anglin in 3-7-2 on one of his local raceways here in Kings Lynn. Down wide around turns three and four. Brian Harrison attacking Mark Gilbank in the 21, slinging across the back straight to avoid a slower car there. 3 3 8 zone, but Chris Brock's off, he's going to attack for the lead as they come out on turn four, side by side with James Morris. He gets down the inside, and 3 3 8 Brock's off, the Leicestershire driver takes up the lead. Chris Farnell, I think that is, no, it's John Wright, sorry, in 3 4 8 in third place, head of Elliot Smith, Mick Rogers, Farnell down in sixth. Nigel Green, though, is laughing quickly further back in the order, see him start to move up as Matt Newson under attack, in fact he's really been attacked there by Mark Gilbank, spins out, off goes Ryan Harrison in avoidance, so Matt Newson left uh, facing the wrong way in the 16 car, racing Mark Sargent's car here tonight after some uh, problems with his own, he won a final in that car earlier this season at Sheffield, if memory serves me right, a bit of push and shove there into turns at three and four, and that's Will Hunter under fire in 2.20, we ride on board with Nigel Reed looking back to uh, turns one and two. Attack here from Mark Gilbank in the 21 as we go down the back straight. Gilbank on the attack, so is Stuart Smith in 390. Green's going to be forced wide. He gets a big wallop there from Smith and into the fence goes Green. Scrabbling their way around at turns uh, three and four. Oh, it looks like we've lost uh, James Morris as well. I could have given some there. He's in the fence. Yes, Morris stuck there on turn four. Coming up towards half distance then in this seat number two, and it's still 338 to Chris Broxoff who holds the lead. Ryan Harrison, a lap down behind him after he went off, avoiding the spinning of Matt Newsom earlier on. Rocks off from John Wright, Elliot Smith in third, Mick Rogers fourth, Yellow Braders holding the top four places as we reach halfway. The Union flag out from the start, Marshall. Further back here, Stuart Smith, 390, chasing now Craig Finnegan in the 55. They lap one of the white graders, I think that's Dan Clifford who started from the back of the grid as a novice grader. Elliot Smith slowing in 293, looks like he's got a problem. Green still ahead of Gilbank. Rogers there under attack from Finnegan. That's the back of four fourth pace. Things starting to quiet down slightly in this heat number two for the Brisker Formula One stock car. Stuart Smith has got past Finnegan. They're now moving up to have a go at John Wright. It's Brisker F2 racer in 3 4 8. Stuart Smith Jr. lunges in at the yellow top, who holds him off. That might have been Stuart Smith steering there, but he's keeping going again. He attacks right, takes himself wide though, and Finnegan goes through. So does Gilbank in the 21. This is the battle for second place. Chris Broxop able to get clear in the early stages. Three wide as they come off to for Smith through the middle. Five laps to go, a signal by the starter. There's a tangle there on turn two for Harrison involved in number two. As Dan Clifford clips a marker tyre and goes into another one on the inside of the home straights. Saw him do that in the whites and yellows race while a lap down as well with delayed Russell Cooper. Cooper uh, Dan Clifford rather able to rejoin. Still your leader is Brock Sockbreak, Finnegan now second, but uh, over half a lap down, six seconds down on the race leader. Stuart Smith in third, then Gilbank and right with Nigel Green in behind them. Ryan Harrison, quickest that time round on his recovery drive up the order after going off earlier on onto the infield. There is our leader, Chris Broxock in 3-3-8. Much the lap up on Harrison, and I think in fact has unlapped himself in a tangle there into turn two. Uh, one car involved is Ben Herman, I think the other one might be Bob Griffin in 166, stuck there on turns one and two. A couple more cars bouncing off them, yes, that's nicely hooked up Griffin and Herdman. Get out of that one, lads, and uh, rather sensibly they slide their way crab like onto the infield. Chris Brock's on then, he's heading for victory, he's on his last lap now. A win for the yellow top. Here he comes into turns three and four. Haven't seen many wins from Chris over the last few years, but he comes in to take the checkered flag in this heat number two. As Dan Clifford gets yet another marker time. Not attraction to those, hasn't he? Stuart Smith gets potted on the last bend there for second place by Craig Finnegan. Smith hitting the wall on the exit, but able to take third, and the rest of them come home. So well done, Chris Broxop. A uh, comparatively rare win for the yellow grader then often uh, throws up some unusual results and uh, well done indeed to the man from Leicestershire, Chris Broxop, winner ahead of Craig Finnegan by half a lap and Stuart Smith taking third. He was pushed wide on the last bend by Finnegan.
Yeah, Mark Gilbank and Will Hunter rounding out the top five. Ryan Harrison on his recovery drive got the fastest lap. He finished 10. 338, Chris Broxhop, winner of Heat 2 at Kings Lynn. You don't win many races, it's fair to say now, but you make sure you won that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting old probably, that's why I don't win so many. Or I don't race as often as I ought to. That's probably the other reason I don't win so many now. It's always nice to see a lower grader win, and you won that by half a lap almost. That was that's quite impressive. Yeah, it was not too bad. The car's not running right. It's running on about seven probably, but uh, well, hopefully we'll get that fixed for the final, and it will go a bit quicker. Well, best of luck and repeat it again. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try. I've had a lot of bad meetings, so you know, a good one now and then's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. 20 cars on track then for the Brisker F1 consolation. These are the drivers that didn't make it through into the final from the heats, looking for the last few qualifying places here from the uh, consolation. Names to look out for include Danny Waitman, who retired from his heat in 212, Paul Harrison in uh, car number two, Ben Herdman is out in this one in 207. We saw him in a tangle with Bobby Griffin in heat two. Frankie JJ is out in treble five, also Carl Roberts. 313 and Nigel Harry in 45. Just some of the names to watch here. So up there we've got uh, Colin Goodswin, the Blue Raider in 372. Dan Clifford starting from the back in 363. Let's hope he can keep away from the marker tyres this time. Richard Woods and Rob Plant will lead the field away. Rob leading a portion of uh, heat number one from the front. Russell Cooper in behind them. Spun out early on in his heat went well in the uh, whites and yellows race until he got taken out in collision with the back marker. So here we go with the consolation, another 16 laps coming away, 20 cars out there. It's Richard Woods who leads the way as the green flag drops, a freshly watered track once again. It's that first turn, Elliot Smith on the front of the whole line of yellow graders here. Oh, they're all going to slide out, Jeff Nichols has gone, Smith, Harry and Chris Farnell all slide into the fence. That's the freshly watered track, I think, that has uh, caught them out there. Elliot Smith, the uh, White and Yellows race winner, caught on the front of that, he got spun aside. So Richard Woods in 268, you can see how careful he's taking it, he's gently feeding the power in around the turns until the track dries out. Leads the round ahead of Plant with the Cooper in third place. Christian Warwick in 307 on the back of Bob Griffin, his car adorned with pink streamers, memory of the uh, Manchester bombing. To the wall goes Tim Warwick, and poked wide there by Frankie JJ in treble five. Challenged on for second place there. Looking down the inside is Russell Cooper, a tangle there on the outside. A couple of cars have gone into the fence. There's more cars going to pile in here. Nigel Harry's in there, Ben Herdman, uh, Carl Roberts, Frankie JJ on the front of it. I think that's Colin Goodswin on the outside as well, all sliding into the wall on turns one and two. The leader avoids them. Woods ahead of Cooper. Looks like James Morris up in the third place in. 463, you saw him hit the wall in uh, heat two on turn four. He battled for the lead with Chris Broxop in the early stages. And there's Morris ahead of Bobby Griffin in 166, the former National Mini Stocks gold top. We'll see the National Mini Stocks out for their final a bit later on. Richard Woods continues to lead by a healthy margin over Cooper. Jack France is in third place, in fact, ahead of James Morris. And then it's Bob Griffin rounding out the top five. They go through on turn four. Trying to close down the second place man now, Russell Cooper. Woods has run wide coming through turn two as Morris passes France for third place. The all yellow car, Colin Goodswood rejoining from the centre there in 372. Challenge on for the lead from Russell Cooper. They're going to turns one and two. James Morris getting closer though. Shale specialist in 463. I remember quite an impressive performance of him at Scunthorpe years ago when the Lincolnshire venue ran Brister F1. Morris passes Russell Cooper who slows up there on turn four, looks like he's out of it. Now Morris free to attack Richard Woods for the lead. He's going for the inside, coming off turn two, they're side by side down the back straight. Morris takes the lead, Jack France in there as well. Woods instantly attacks back. With Richard Woods' style is every time someone overtakes him, he instantly tries to hook them out. It uh, doesn't always work. We saw it in the Whites and Yellows race earlier on with Nigel Harry. Woods now dropping back to fourth because Griffin has come through as well. It's Morris from France then. But Griffin into third place. Woods down to fourth. Paul Harrison is fifth. Lower graders still holding sway at the moment. Dan Clifford has spun. Caught a glimpse of there on turn three. It's James Morris, the man from Warrington in Cheshire, who leads the way. Here is the 2-1-2 of Danny Wayman. A quiet meeting for him so far. 
tired from his heat. Did set fastest lap, so the pace is there. That's Tim Warwick there in 3.07. There's Paul Harrison in number two. Didn't see much of him in the heats either. There's our leader, 463 Morris, ahead of France by just over half a second. Griffin is in third. Then Paul Harrison and then Richard Woods still in the top five in 2.68 to get into today's final. Side there in two turn one, that's Colin Goodswin recovering after he got caught in a pile up on turns one and two earlier on. Danny Wayne, but with the fastest lap of the race, he's behind this group somewhere. Bobby Griffin leading Jack France now. Paul Harrison into the top five in number two. There is Wayman in 2 1 2. The British under 25s champion, Cup title currently held by Ant Wortley, also a British touring car racer this year. He'll be back at the end of the season to defend his title at Birmingham. Jim Woods coming under fire from Danny Wademan now, but leader not coming under fire from anybody. Bobby Griffin is now second, but he's not close enough to challenge James Morris at the moment. Paul Harrison is up in the third place in car number two. The dust begins to fly once again in the closing stages of this consolation event. Bobby Griffin laps. Jeff Nichols in 2 1 5. Hardest to close down the race leader. Behind him is some uh, lap traffic, I think. That's Paul Harrison in third in car two. We're on the last lap now, is Bobby Griffin going to get close enough to lunge in on the last bend and take the win? He's going to try and take him in the turn three and four. He's not going to get close enough, and it's going to be another yellow grade win. 4 6 3. James Morris takes the flag. Second goes to Bobby Griffin. Paul Harrison third. We'll look confirm the rest of the finishers. In just a few moments time, looks like Danny Wayman was next to him. Chris Farnell has taken out on the last spin there. He rejoins to across the line in the 32 car. Looks like he won't be getting through to today's final. James Morris certainly will, though. A bit of smoke there on the slowdown lap from the 463 car. Hopefully that's nothing major, and he will make it out for the final. So Morris taking the win by six tenths of a second ahead of Bob Griffin, Paul Harrison, Danny Wayman, and Mark Woodhull following them home. Richard Woods and Richie Ahern also getting final places. It was Danny Wayman who got the fastest lap in fourth place. 463, James Morris, winner of the consolation here at Kings Lynn. It's a good night for Yellow Top so far. Yeah, yeah, it's, everyone seems to be getting away. So I don't know if it's the weather and the track's drying out, but we managed to just get clear then and uh, keep out of the way. I was expecting a big one at the end, but it never come like. Yeah, it, was, it was getting dustier as well. Could you, could you see that you were uh, being caught? I wasn't looking, being honest, I was just expecting, like, uh, Bellevue last time, I never looked at me there, and Craig Finn got his last, last bend, so I was, I was expecting some at them, but uh, thankfully, uh, I couldn't see the lap boards, and I just seen the tank of flags, so I thought that'll do. That's the one that counts. It certainly is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good luck for the final. Thanks very much. Just a quick thank you to uh, some people who helped us out this year, uh, AES Rescue, uh, Mab Contractors and Matt Newsom Racing. Thank you. Great action so far, then, here on the Kingsley Shale. Join us for more stock car racing after this short break. to the Adrian Flux Arena, Kings Lynn, for part two of our coverage of Brisker F1 and National Mini Stocks. It'll be the Young Guns out on track next for their meeting final. Two heat wins for number eight, Catherine Harris, and one heat for the gold top, Charlie Ginchard, number one in the uh, qualifying heats tonight. Final time over 12 laps away. They go Jamie Gwynn on the inside in 145 and 630, Danny Parker lead them off for this final. These are under 16 racers in their armoured minis. Very spectacular, very fearless these drivers are. What can't be taken out of there already on turn two. Charlie Ginchard there in number one, already making his way up the order. It's Danny Parker who just holds the lead ahead of Jamie Gwynn. They make contact down the home straight. Parker holds the lead. Already coming up on some lap traffic. Tom Streets in 282 in uh, third place there. I think the two leaders' transponders aren't working because they're not showing up on the uh, lap times at the moment. There is Charlie Ginchar battling with Jack Wintz in 1-8-0. Catherine Harris ahead of them in number eight. So our two heat winners running together there. So look out for the Evans twins, 3-8-1 Tyro and 3-9-2 Lewis. They're having a good season. Ramps off each other there around turns one and two. Harris almost spun aside by Ginchard. Quite a rivalry between those two developing 
this season. Charlie Ginchard, the gold and silver top. He won pretty much everything last season. 180 of Jack Wintz, the younger brother of Courtney Wintz, the gold top of two years ago on their tails. He splits the pairing there, going into turn one. Now it means Charlie Ginchard wide. Harris trying to get back through on the inside. The car carrying pink streamers on her car. And the car in the fence on turn four. And I think the caution flags are going to come out. That is number 17 of Ella McAfee has gone into the wall there. Nice parking job, those into the uh, barrier. The race is brought to a halt to check on Ella. The cars will be lined up single file. That's the first stoppage we've had tonight, I believe. We see the uh, main protagonists battling there in the midfield, but Ella McAfee just got elbowed wide there on turns three and four. Into the wall she went, and uh, that's the end of her meeting final. Still Danny Parker with the lead, 391 of Rebecca Smith, daughter of the great Andy Smith, up there in second place. We get to back underway with this meeting final. Leah Seeley in 475 is in behind them. We are back underway. And the battle is resumed with 180 Jack Wins straight away on the attack on the back of Top Streets in 282. It's Danny Parker, number 630. She leads the way. Ross 290 of Charlie Tomlin, he's come to a stop there on turns three and four, the ex Ninja car racer. Rebecca Smith still in second place in 391. Her sister Jessica was very successful in the national minis as well. Gitchard still can't get past Catherine Harris here. Jack Wins ahead of them has done the fastest lap of the race in 180. There's Tyron Evans, number 381, being reeled in by this pairing. Two heat winners. These cars warming up as well, these drivers warming up for their British Championship next week at Sheffield. Harris attacks the 381 of Tyron Evans. Most of her success has come on Shale so far, Catherine Harris getting some bumper there from Charlie Inchard. Catherine, the World of Shale champion. So won the Inca Race Gold Cup at Birmingham earlier this season. But it's still Danny Parker who leads, Jack Waits in second, and finally Charlie Inchard gets the bumper in there and gets Catherine Harris sent out wide. Now Jack Wintz to the inside of the race-leading 6-3-0 car, and he goes through. Jack Wintz takes the lead in 180. Second place is Parker in 6-3-0. Then Gitchard in third. Catherine Harris trying to get through for fourth place in the number eight, trying to chase down Charlie Gitchard and retake the gold top. Gitchard now attacking Parker, leads her wide on turns three and four. Goes through in two. Second place now, can he catch Jack Wintz? Son of Brisker F1 great Ray Wintz. As you mentioned earlier, younger brother of Courtney has uh, made her Brisker F1 debut at the end of last season. Wintz family have raced under number 180 over the years. Catherine Harris attacking back again, trying to take Danny Parker, and she's done so. Jack Wintz with the lead ahead of Charlie Ginchard in second place. Harris in third. Looks like Gitchard's transponder not working as well on that last lap around. We're going into the final lap this time of this National Mini Stocks final, it looks like it is going to be Jack Wintz in the 180 car. I don't think Charlie Gitchard's quite going to get close enough for an attack on the final turn and the gold top this time is going to have to settle for second place because here comes 180 Jack Wintz continuing his family's racing tradition. Comes out of the final turn, takes the flag of Ginchard and Harris in third place, Danny Parker in excellent fourth, and Tyron Evans rounds out the top five. Confirm the rest of the results in just a moment. Well done, Jack Wintz, a clear win in 180. Charlie Ginchard couldn't catch him on the final turn. It's Wintz the winner ahead of Ginchard, Harris, Parker, a brilliant fourth ahead of Evans, then Smith, Declan Kavanagh in seventh, and Lewis Evans, the second of the twins, down in ninth. Jack Wintz also got the Fastest lap en route to the victory, 17 of the 21 starters got to the finish. Now it's time for our main event, the Brisker F1 feature final. 31 cars out there for this one. This race contesting the Mo Jones Memorial Trophy, a freshly watered track once again. Might uh, catch one or two drivers out in the early stages. It looks a little slippery out there. There are the six superstars, Danny Wainman, Tom Harris, Junior Wainman in number one, Craig Finnegan in 55. Rob Plant, who will lead them off alongside Richard Woods. This is going to be a good one. 20 laps for the meeting final, 31 cars on track. Away we go then with the Mojo's Memorial Final here at the Adrian Flux Arena. Our first turn to Kingsley, usually very frantic. Are they all going to make it round? The Reds and Superstars overlapping already. 
They've all got round, amazingly enough. So 268, Richard Woods it is with the early lead. John Wright comes through in the second. There goes the first one. I think that's Luke Dennis in 192 has been spun out there on turn three. So he's the first to fall. Rejoin at the back. Green marker tires up there on turn four. Running getting very busy among the Reds and Superstars. Look how many of them there are. Nigel Green carrying our onboard camera once again. This one, Mark Gilbank gets spun out in the 21. He rejoins. On board with Nigel Green working the wheel around turns three and four. Somebody going off to the inside there. Didn't see who it was on turn one. So Richard Woods, the early pace setter then in 268 ahead of John Wright in 348. Junior Wayman ahead of Stuart Smith. We look back from Junior Wayman, the world and British champions car. Defends his British title next week at Sheffield. He's under fire here from Stuart Smith in 390. Could well be the favourite to take it off him. Paul Harrison in there as well in car for two. He's won the British on a couple of occasions. Really getting fired into the fence there in the background. I think that might have been Frankie JJ in treble five. Carl Hawkins being sent wide going 175, and here's the battle for the lead. John Wright making a move up the inside. Richard Woods leans on him, and they're going to spin out, going into the back straights. Woods gave it too much welly there, trying to defend from John Wright, who gets going again. Looks like uh, he's lost the lead. We'll pick up who's leading now in just a few moments' time. John Wright back in among the superstars. Now Rob Plant slowing up in 364, and your leader is now Mick Rogers in the 244 car. So three different leaders inside the first five laps. Rogers now with the lead, Chris Broxop I think is in second place, Billy Johnson gets fired in there by Bobby Griffin at turn three, this is a frantic race so far, that's just among the lower graders, the uh, red tops and superstars, all battling in a tight pack as well, Mick Rogers with the lead, ahead of Broxop and uh, Broxop attacks as they go into turn three, oh, he's got himself caught up, the two leaders slide out now, who's going to take the lead, looks like James Morris in 463 has come through, he's got Matt Newson on his tail, Newson lunges in at the wheel of the Mark Sargent car into turn one, I can't keep up with this, Big Rogers rejoins out of the, the fence on turns three and four, so it's Morris from Newson, Bob Griffin in third place, Michael Scriven retiring there in number 12, oh there's cars everywhere coming out of turn four, uh, Craig Finnegan, uh, Bobby Griffin's in there, Matt Newson and Stuart Smith nearly spin it, there's cars off onto the centre, into a marker tyre goes Junior Wayman, goodness gracious me, like a bad day on the A14, heading towards Kingsley, this is. Cars absolutely all over the place. That's let James Morris escape into the lead, the uh, consolation winner. Could he take a double here? Just beginning to fly once again, and we're only halfway through this race. It's Morris ahead of Tom Harris. Brian Harrison in third ahead of Matt Newson, and Frankie Wakeman Jr. is pulling off. He must have broken something when he hit that marker tyre a lap ago. Looks like the front suspension may be broken. And Wakeman, the world champion, is out. Union flag is out for halfway. The uh, battle has broken up very slightly now after that frantic uh, scene into turn one a couple of laps ago when everybody seemed to bomb burst their way in. Tangle there on turn three. Stuart Smith nearly gets taken out. That's Will Hunter that spun in uh, 220. Billy Johnson slowing up in 169. Smith under fire again. This time from Mark Gilbank. Fires him into the back of Carl Hawkins. The fans loving this and the drivers, I'm sure, loving every second of it as well. Oh, goodness me, James Morris leads the way in 4.63, ahead of number 84 of Tom Harris. Coming into lap, Luke Dennis in 1.92. So Morris with a clear margin. Oh, he's got caught up there. Dennis has hit a back marker, and uh, there's, a, there's a wheel off in there somewhere. So that will be a stoppage, I think. Tom Harris trying to take the lead. James Morris survived that. He's got the lead, but the caution comes out. Tom Harris, I think, went through on the inside after the yellows had come out there. So the yellow flags are out with a wheel off at turns three and four, I think. I caught a glimpse of there as Luke Dennis hit the spun car of Jeff Nichols. And those back markers nearly took out James Morris, which resulted in Tom Harris coming through, but I think he took the lead after the yellow flags had come out. So we have our first stoppage in the F1s this evening. Let's see again what happened. Will Hunter's car spun there. He was clipped by Jeff Nichols, who spun around and then Luke Dennis crashed into them, that delayed the race leader. A wheel coming off, I think, Luke Dennis's car. That's the reason for the stoppage, the loose wheel stuck on turn four there. If a car was to hit that, it could fly up into the fencing, so the uh, race brought to a halt in the interests of safety. We'll see again what happened there. James Morris nearly getting caught up with Luke Dennis as he tangled with Jeff Nichols. The wheel coming off Luke Dennis's car after they'd hit, they'd hit Will Hunter's car. There we see the three-wheel Luke Dennis joining Jeff Nichols in the graveyard on the centre. So 
James Morris back in the lead ahead of Tom Harris and Ryan Harris. A good strategy here by Kingsley, using the water cart as a pace truck for this restart to keep the dust down. Drivers will have to be careful, though. It'll be a bit slippery for the first lap or two. Still plenty of cars left. As well, there are plenty of cars out of the race. Past halfway now, we have lost nearly half the field so far. Chaotic final here for the Bo Jones Memorial Trophy. Keeping it steady around this rolling lap. The uh, water carrier will now pull onto the centre. James Morris in 463 has got the weight of the world on his shoulders here with Tom Harris and Ryan Harrison behind him. Well, this is going to be a good one. Matt Newson there in fourth place, the local man in number 16. Here we go, the green flag goes down, we're back underway. James Morris bouncing off the fence as they come up to four. And Tom Harris wasting no time, straight for the inside on the attack, and he goes through, this time into the lead. But Morris not far, not so. Dropping back though, he's fighting back there as they go into turn three. They all run out wide on the slippery surface. At the inside, Ryan Harrison will take second. Matt Newson comes through in the third place. Newson sideways, tags Morris. They can't turn for Morris is gone. He spins onto the centre collector, Richie Ahern's car. And they're all over each other in the lower reaches of the top ten. This is fantastic racing. Danny Wayman has just done the fastest lap of the race. He's down in about ninth place. Tom Harris leads from Ryan Harrison, five laps to go. Tom Harris looking for a heat and final double then ahead of Ryan Harris in 197. The former silver top Stuart Smith is up to third in 390. He's battling with Matt Newson and Nigel Breen. So the higher graders rising to the occasion in this Kingsley final. Matt Newson gets fired in at turn three. There's cars everywhere on the exit. Newson's held third place. Then Smith, Green, and Mark Gilbank want a piece of this as well. In number 21, four of them fighting for third and fourth place. Green passes Smith for fourth. He'll now have a go at Newson. Smith back up the inside of Nigel Green in 4 4 5. They're going to be three wide almost because Gilbank in there as well. Knocks Smith out wide and takes fifth position. Still out in front, it's Tom Harris ahead of Ryan Harrison coming around the start lead for the ultimate lap this time. Nigel Green just biding his time in the third place battle, waiting to see what happens between the two leaders on the last bend perhaps. He's under fire from Mark Gilbank though. Green, Gilbank, Smith now the order in this group. Here comes Tom Harris, here comes Ryan Harris, and he lunges in, he spins Harris sideways, oh, he's got himself caught up on the front of Harris's car, they're stuck together. Here comes Matt Newson trying to get through on the inside, they free themselves just as Newson comes up on them, trying to go around the outside. Harris has somehow held his lead, Ryan Harrison will try again, he's going to spin Tom Harris out, Newson's gone as well, Nigel Green goes into the lead in 4 4 5. Green leads it, and he's coming round towards the chequered flag. Smith and Harrison battling for second, but Nigel Green is going to win it. Nigel Green takes the chequered flag. What a cracking race. Absolutely superb. That is the race of the year so far. Absolutely brilliant racing there from everybody. And Nigel Green, well, he didn't strike out of the two leaders. He played the waiting game in the third place fight. And that proved the right decision because Ryan Harrison, two lunges at Tom Harris, eventually spun him out. Delayed himself, though. Matt Newson spun as well. And Nigel Green, fourth to first in one lap. Stuart Smith barges into a marker tower on the slowdown. Boy, is he frustrated. Could have been him challenging for the lead, of course, if he'd stayed ahead of Nigel Green. But the result is Green, Paul Harrison and Stuart Smith, the top three. Paul Hines coming from nowhere into fourth. Matt Newson ended up in sixth, and Tom Harris and Ryan Harrison in ninth and tenth. Fastest lap of that race going to Matt Newson down in sixth place ahead of Paul Hines. Danny Wayman, quick laps as well. What a cracking race. 4-4-5, Nigel Green, winner of the Formula 1 final here at Kings Lynn. It was also the Moore Jones Memorial Trophy, and that was certainly a, a fitting race. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It fell into my hands at the end there, but uh, I'd imagine it'd be a good race to watch back, yeah. So um, it was nice, obviously, to win the Memorial Trophy. Gary's really respected in the paddock for what he does and all the rest of it in his, his character, so to win the Memorial race of, for his wife is, is obviously really nice. As for the race itself, with two laps to go, you were nowhere really further back, and then Ryan and uh, Tom tangled up, and your eyes must have lit up and thought, I'm having this. Yeah. Yeah, it just opened the gap up for me nicely. Um, so my car felt good when it was drying up, to be honest. I had a bit of a misfire with the engine, which wasn't actually harming me too much. 
but uh, yeah it just felt right for me in the end it was really dusty visibility was terrible coming down the back straight just had to keep your foot down hope no one were parked in the fence but yeah it felt right and to get another win third final of the year i'm happy with that yeah, if you don't take the risk you don't get the reward do you and that's that's where proper drivers really do earn it yeah well obviously there's a lot of people in formula one but you you need big at certain times of that there's cars tangling up in front and crashes down the straight you just have to really commit to what gap you think is going to be there and hope it is if not you open one and there was a few times where uh, I had to clear my way through but uh, yeah it felt right and got all the wheels on and took the win a long way back in the Grand National but if a race is like that I'm sure you can make up some places yeah I'll struggle unless there's a stoppage you need a stoppage really from a lap down but obviously I'll do my best and uh, I'll enjoy it good luck thank you 28 cars out on track then for our final race of the night, the Grand National under the floodlights. Nigel Green, having won the final, will start from the one-lap handicap. Richard Woods, Rob Plant and Russell Cooper lead the field round. The three white graders, Carl Hawkins and Frankie JJ at the front on the blues. Junior Wayman will look to make up for his non-finish in the final, the world champion. Ben Herdman and Ben Riley head the Reds, Matt Newson in there, Paul Harrison, he's not had the best of nights so far, made up for it slightly with the top three in the final. Here we go then with the 16-lap Grand National, 28 cars on track, now towards the first turn already, Junior Wayman under fire from his great rival Stuart Smith, 3-9 opens him wide towards the fence on turn four, You're a spinner already, in fact we've got a couple of spinners, Ben Riley and Paul Harrison, we lose there on turn four, Carl Roberts attacking the 3-3-5 of Mark Woodhull, Car into the fence there, I think that might have been Frankie JJ in trouble five. Robert Plant was second, he's been spun out on turn four as well. Yellow Graders getting stuck together once again. Car wheeling its way down the home straight, that was John Wright. Elliot Smith spins out in 293, the white and yellow race winner from earlier on. Stuart Smith battling Ben Herdman. Good tangle up there, nearly being taken out. Bob Griffin in 166, still quite slippery out there from the track watering credit to the track staff for trying their hardest to keep the dust down. Jackson France getting caught up there with John Wright and James Morris. They'll spill into the market tyres, not to the centre green. 335 Mark Woodman on the attack. As we look back from Stuart Smith in 390, bounces off Matt Newson in number 16. So rivalries from the final being renewed here. It's 268 Richard Woods out in front. He's been hitting everything in sight tonight. A tangle on the outside there, James Morris. And a couple of others go out into the fence on turn two. Woods continues to lead. He's had a very lively evening to say the least. Woods leads it, but the yellow flag has come out. Caution is out for those stranding cars on turn two. You can see the frustration from Richard Woods thumping his steering wheel in anger there that the yellows had come out while he was well clear. There's the reason for the yellow. Rob Plant stuck in the middle of turn two. Luke Dennis onto the centre in 192. Jack France with some damage by the look of it as well. So Woods with the lead then. He's uh, clashed with a few people tonight, and now he's got the whole pack queued up behind him, waiting for perhaps a revenge shot. Frankie JJ has got a puncture there, I just noticed, heading down the home straight. His right front tyre is flat. It's James Morris in second place. Third is Nigel Harry, then Russell Cooper, Chris Farnell. Frankie JJ is next, but uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to pull to the centre with that puncture. Behind them looks like Stuart Smith following a trademark fast start in 3 I know. We're looking back from the race leader. Richard Woods. Now, how long can he survive in front in 268? We've got James Morris, already a winner tonight in the consolation, on his bumper. Ready for the restart. The green flag goes down. We are back underway over the remaining 11 laps. James Morris on the attack as they head out of turn four. Try and push the leader wide into turn one. Goes up the inside. Morris about to take the lead. Woods won't give way. He defends. He turns across him there. That's exactly what he did to John Wright earlier on in the final. And all he's done is spun himself out for the second time. Junior Wayman's gone as well. I think Tom Harris spun him out there on turn two. So now who's taken over the lead? Looks like it's Morris up front. Or is it? No, it's Nigel Harry who's taken up the lead in 45. So Harry leads it. He's going clear at the front then ahead of the. Uh, Star Raiders lining up behind him. Nigel Harry drifts it out around turn four. Who's that there in second place? Looks like Matt Newson in the 16 car. Indeed it is. Third is Stuart Smith, then Russell Cooper. Craig Finnegan with the fastest lap of the race in 
fifth position ahead of Tom Harris. Harry leads it then, but he's running wide. He's hit the fence on turns three and four, rattles around the steel plate fence, and Matt Houston takes the lead. I think Nigel Harry got overexcited at the fact he was leading there and just slid wide. He's gone wide again on the turn one and two, and through goes Stuart Smith into a second place. It won't be long now before Smith attacks race leader Matt Newsom. Nigel Harry in third place. Best we've seen him run so far this year. Tonight he's under fire from Craig Finnegan, 2014 world champion. Here's Newsom attacking Richard Woods, who's now a lap down. Stuart Smith in behind them, and Woods attacking Newsom there, and that Stuart Smith goes through into the lead at half distance. Richard Woods really has been smacking his bumper into everything in sight tonight. It's been a joy to watch. Hasn't got much in the way of results, though, unfortunately, although he did qualify for the final. Smith leads it ahead of Newsom. Finnegan now in third. Down the home straight, Stuart Smith. He uh, hasn't had as much success of late, mainly because he's been having to use his shale car for tarmac meetings after his uh, tarmac engine failed at Skegness. There's Danny Wayman ahead of Tom Harris in the 84K within an ace of winning the final. They're battling for fourth place. How far up has Nigel Green got through his lap handicap? We'll try and pick that up a little later on. There's Harris. Nigel Harry in behind them. Then Mark Woodhull. There is Green, so he's up to about eighth or ninth place. That's good going from the lap handicap here at Kingston. A flash of flame from one car has pulled onto the centre there. So it's Smith, Newson, Finnegan, Harris, Harry, and Nigel Green now up in the sixth. Doing a fantastic run in 4 4 5. To come through on turns three and four through the dust comes Stuart Smith. What a hugely entertaining meeting this has been. That's a final for the Mojo Memorial Trophy. It'll be one of the highlights of the season on the Shale Amps here. It's the level of action we're seeing here. Who knows what's going to happen in the British Championship coming up soon at Sheffield. Green attacking our earlier leader, Nigel Harry, goes through on turn three. The winner of the Mojo Memorial. I don't think they're going to catch Stuart Smith here. He's looking to get back to winning ways in style. In 3 9 -0. third place in the final. It's beaten on the line by Paul Harrison. Oh, Nigel Harry dropping out. Really does have no luck in Bristol F1, sadly. The great entertainer in 45. They're coming round to start the last lap then. Stuart Smith coming up to lap John Wright in 3 4 8 who briefly led the final tonight. Before he tackled with Richard Woods. Back half of traffic, it shouldn't phase him though. Stuart Smith, the uh, former world champion, won his world final here at Kings Lynn some ten years ago. Not puts Bobby Griffin out of his way. Oh, no. Nearly caught up there with Ben Herdman, but he's going to escape to take the win. Very nearly hit the spinning Ben Herdman there on the last bend, but he gets through Stuart Smith to take the Grand National. See again what's happened there. There goes Herdman, and there is Smith nearly hit him head on. That could have been disastrous for Stuart Smith, but he held on to take the victory. And off an excellent evening's racing here on the Kingsley Shale. Stuart Smith, the winner then, ahead of Matt Newsom by two seconds. Craig Finnegan third, ahead of Danny Wayman. Tom Harris rounding out the top five. And it's Finnegan who got the fastest lap of the race. 390, Stuart Smith Jr., winner of the uh, Grand National here at Kingsley. You could have won the final, but then Nigel Green and a few others stopped that. Yeah. It was a brilliant race to watch, I'm sure, but from inside my car it was so frustrating. I had no brakes from the word go, and um, Frankie Wayman were messing me around at the start, and I just couldn't get away because I didn't have the brakes, and you need it when you're in traffic to position your car underneath people. And I couldn't, and I ended up just getting damaged and uh, lucky, really, to get a third with no brakes. It, I was so frustrated because the car felt really good, other than that, you know, the rest of the track where you don't need brakes, it was brilliant, but where you needed them, it was rubbish. Yeah, you've certainly got some drive out the corners <laughs> just watching tonight. It's it's picking up really good, but like you said, with no brakes on shale, it can be difficult. Yeah, because I had some then, but there's some underlying problems we've, we've got to get sorted for next time. It's uh, it, You have a balance with your brakes from front to back, and there's something amiss. It's got too much rear end brakes, so I were driving that race with no brakes, but because I had a clear track, I could pick my, my position on the track and it, it felt really good. It could just uh, go even better with some brakes. And with problems with your tarmac engine, you raced the shale car last weekend on tarmac. Now you've won in it on shale. Who says you can't race the same car on two surfaces? Well, there we go. I mean, I got a, 
a fifth at Buxton and um, to get a fifth on tarmac especially at Buxton because the races can get a bit drawn out um, to get a fifth there in Michelle car we're really really happy with that and um, beating some lads in shale car, uh, tarmac cars and to come here and be as quick as we are uh, with, the, with these little teething problems though it's got to be said because when you do change things sometimes you miss things out and it can be a, a problem on this night you know which it was and next up is the British at Sheffield you're going to want that yeah absolutely um, I'm not here to play dominoes I'm here to win championships so yeah Thanks a lot. Thank you. Let's have a look at some of the stats from tonight's meeting then. While Craig Finnegan in the Grand National got the fastest lap of the day, but it's still Stuart Smith, the Grand National winner, who leads the grading points by a clear margin ahead of Nigel Green. He's just four points ahead of Junior Wainman with Tom Harris and Danny Wainman next up. That's about all from tonight then here at Kingslin. Thank you for watching. Next time it's the British Championship from Sheffield. It's goodbye for now.